How's it going guys? Life Tech here once again with another video. We're going to be showing you how to change the brakes on a 2001 Nissan Altima. I'll show you everything, how it's done, the breakdown and what tools you need. So let's get started. Okay, first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get a jack and jack up the car on the center jack point. Right about there, you'll see a little nub right underneath the car. Place a jack and uh, get the car almost all the way up. So after that, next thing you're going to want to do is get your 21. <clears throat> break, the, break the nuts loose. I already broke these loose. So you want to break them loose while the tires are still on the ground. Okay, so after you have all the, the lug nuts broken loose, you can go ahead and just jack up the car. Make sure the parking brake's on uh, so the car doesn't roll back. Okay, once the tires are off the ground, you can go ahead and take off the tires. Okay, so once you have the tire removed, there's going to be two bolts, one on the top, one on the bottom. There's going to be a 14 millimeter bolt. All you need is just a short or deep 14 millimeter, millimeter ratchet, 3 8 Just go ahead and break that loose. Once you break that loose, take the screw out all the way. And then you should be able to lift this up just like so. Let me just back that up a little bit. Now, in order for you to compress the piston, I have a special tool, a piston pusher. It goes in here and pushes it in. You can rent a tool from your local auto parts store, or you can use a C-clamp, or you can use a channel lock, like so. Most people have channel locks, so I would like to just show you how a normal person would do it. And you just grab on to the piston like so, and you just squeeze it. I'll show you like this. Takes a little bit of effort, but you can get it down. <clears throat> I'm just going to use my handy dandy tool. Go ahead and push that piston all the way through so it's all the way down. Once it's all the way down, you can go ahead and take off your brake pads here. Brake pads are pretty low. Okay, let's go ahead and remove those. And if your new brake pit comes with hardware, you, I would advise replacing these as well. The next thing I like to do is I like to uh, match up the old pad with the new pad just to make sure you got the right stuff. So we got our new set here. They come with the, the brake sensor already. So we're just gonna go ahead and match one up. And it's an exact fit. In my case, mine does come with a set of hardware. So we're just gonna go ahead and replace these guys. As you can see, the hardware comes with two different kinds. This one's for the bottom and this one is for the top. Just match it up to exactly the same ones that you're taking out. So we're just gonna get our little flathead tool here. Just pry it up. You can usually just pull on these and they come right out. Get the matching one. Put this in here and push it down. Uh-huh. Like so. Snaps in and then make sure that on the inside tab here, let me show you. Get these guys. And you push that back so that it doesn't hit the rotor. You wanna make sure that's very important because sometimes you can put these on and those will be sticking out a little bit and they'll hit the rotor. And then you put, do your job, finish the job. The car's squeaking like crazy and you have no idea why. So let's go ahead and take off the rear one pull on the back ends and it should come right out. And 
and replace this way or this one. I'm going to push these in, make sure it goes in all the way nice and snug. And there you have it. Your hardware is installed. Make sure you turn the rotor. No noise. So we're good on that. Now, installing the pads, they come, since they come with four sensors here, one, two, and then the other two have two. <clears throat> For this case, you want to make sure the sensors are on the top side, not on the bottom, both on the top. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to slip this sensor aside onto the springy tab here, slip that on, put it into place, and push it in like that. It's going to want to spring out a little bit, so you got to hold it. So that one's in like that, and it's, you want to make sure the spring is inside the sensor. Okay, now that we have <clears throat> both of our pads in, you want to hold them together like this and bring this down. You don't have to take off the top bolt when you take off the caliper. Just take the bottom one off and it swings up. You have your bolt, 14 millimeter. Screw that in. Make sure it's tight. It doesn't have to be super tight, just like maybe 20 pounds. Just give it a couple hits, that's good enough. And then replace the tire. I like to get my feet underneath so I can support it with my knees. Slide it on. And then just hand thread. You want to, it's very important that you hand thread these. If you have uh, pneumatic tools or air tools, you don't want to just zoom them in because then you can strip them and then you won't be able to take them off the next time. So just go ahead and hand thread all of these. Just like so. And then after you hand thread, you know you got a couple threads on. You can use something similar to this or you can use a uh, regular air a hand ratchet. <coughs> Boom. Just like that. I always start with the bottom one so then you don't have to hold it anymore. And that's pretty much how you do a brake job. It's the exact same thing for the other side. Um, <clears throat> make sure after you lower the car, after the lug nuts are tight, that you um, tighten the lug nuts. That's the most important thing. And then the second most important thing is make sure you pump the brakes after the job because uh, you're pushing in the piston all the way. So there's a little bit of clearance in between the caliper and the brake pads. So you just want to make sure that you close that clearance and then um, you'll be good to go. Thanks for watching. Until next time. Thanks, guys.